Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today we're going to do an unboxing from our Amazon order. So the way that things work for our homeschool, we are signed up through a charter with our school district, and that homeschool charter um, allows us to order items and they will place the order for us. We actually get some money by being signed up with that charter. Um, that they allot to each student each year. And so we can spend that money and order books and supplies and curriculum, and they will place that order and ship it to us. I don't do this for all of our stuff. A lot of our curriculum was online download or some of the books that we needed at the very beginning of the year. We ordered them directly just because sometimes the process of having the charter order it for us takes a little bit longer um, but a bulk of our books have been ordered by the charter using the money that they give us and so I've got three packages here from Amazon today so we are going to unbox all I have done is cut them I haven't looked inside yet so I honestly don't know what we're getting all right so our first one is going to be logic to the rescue there we go so this year we are doing um, sort of a logic problem solving um, critical thinking type of extra uh, lesson within our homeschool I've incorporated it so far into our morning work and um, we'll see if it becomes more of a um, a particular like subject or if it's just something that we're trying to introduce but my thoughts are is that my kid is in fourth grade and I want to start working on having uh, them uh, be able to problem solve on their own instead of just taking the information and reciting it back or following directions but really working on those problem solving critical thinking thinking for yourself independence type stuff so I read good reviews about this, and hopefully this Logic to the Rescue by Chris Langman will be um, good for us to use. All right, so then we have a smaller box, and a lot of these books are going to be for our language arts or our history curriculum, because those are the ones that had the most books. Um, so we have a different mirror, uh, history of Multicultural America. Um, this is part of our history. We are doing history with uh, Blossom and Root, and we got, um, I'm not going to think of the title of it right now, but the history curriculum from um, a woke from woke homeschooling. And both of those try to present um, U.S. history from a perspective of the indigenous populations, um, black Americans. And so from that, I also started getting um, some recommendations um, and kind of branched off of that, which is why we have this next one, a queer history of the United States. So again, looking at the perspective, um, our history from the perspectives of minority populations. So looking forward to incorporating those into our history. Here we have The People Could Fly, American Black Folk Tales. One Thousand and One Things Everyone Should Know About African American History. Children of the Longhouse. An African American and Latin history, Latin, Latin X history of the United States. A disability history of the United States. King George, what was his problem? Um, hilarious story of the American Revolution. So some of these were trying to be a little bit more kid friendly um, to help better understand the context. 
and things that, you know, my kid might actually be a little bit more interested in reading on their own as well. And then Heart and Soul, the story of America and African Americans. So I think most of those were for history. And then I have another box, which I'm not going to be able to lift up, but it's like, it's like that big, right? A big one. So we're going to see what we have in here. All right. So this is a game race across the USA. We had been learning about um, states. We learned the state song. We learned where all the states were on the map. Um, so having some games, we like to have, we have tons of board games. We're kind of a board game family. Um, we don't really game school per se, but we have a ton of games that have educational components to them. So this will be an addition to our collection. And games are great for when we need kind of a break from the reading, writing, arithmetic type patterns. Um, and then this is Continent Race. Um, and this one is about the different continents and countries on the continent. Um, and I got saw really good reviews about this. This one was created by a kid for kids. So seems like it might be fun. And again, like I said, we do have a lot of games. We do play a lot of games. And they're really great for when we're taking breaks from our more structured school routine. All right, so it looks like some of these are going to be language arts um, or, like I said, things that I'm sort of incorporating separately. So this is the philosophy book. Um, we have the religion book that's like done in the same style that we used last year as kind of a reference as we were learning about different cultures and different beliefs and some mythology. Um, so this is the philosophy book. Like I said, we're kind of introducing, like I said, it's not really a philosophy course per se as a subject because I have a fourth grader, but more about some of those concepts about critical thinking and how other people think and how you can think about things differently. So yeah, so I'm excited to look at these. Um, here is a, another philosophy book, a cartoon introduction to philosophy. So I think that will make it interesting and it's a graphic novel, right? Which then, then means my kid is going to want to read it because they don't think they're actually reading. They consider graphic novels like fun as opposed to chapter books as work. So that's kind of where we are with our learning. And then these are going to be part of our language arts. So we have James and the Giant Peach and we have the Borrowers. So those will be language arts. For language arts, we are using quite the combination. We have some sections of moving beyond the page, um, seven through nine left over. Um, so we're gonna cover some of those. We have the Blossom and Root curriculum for fourth grade that has language arts in it. And we got some sections um, from the Brave Writer, they have language arts units. And so, so far we have done one section from Moving Beyond the Page and we've done two units from um, Brave Writer. And so we're just gonna have a lot of different language arts options that we're gonna pull from. And I am letting my kid pick, like I'm saying, okay, here's the books and they get to look at the books and then they get to choose which book they want to read. And then we'll do the language arts um, that goes with that. So we're not necessarily going in any particular sequence, um, but I'm giving them the choice. And so far that's gone really well because they've been super interested in the books that we've been reading, which is an improvement from last year. So we'll keep up with that. All right, these are also part of our language arts. This is going to be um, from the Blossom and Root uh, language arts. So this is a child's introduction to Norse mythology and child's introduction to Greek mythology. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about myths and mythology in that language arts. 
All right, here's another one on Norse myths. I know they have a whole section in Blossom and Root on mythology. Let's see. A couple more language arts. We have A Wrinkle in Time as a graphic novel. Again, if I can give it to my kid in a graphic novel, then they don't view it as the same level of reading, but we'll still get the story. And I think that that is perfectly fine. Um, we've got Stuart Little. And we have Smithsonian History Year by Year. This is going to be one that we'll incorporate with our history, but in a timeline format um, so that we can kind of see, reference the, the timeline as to where people were. This will be great to kind of provide that context. So when we learn about pieces of history to kind of see where it fits within our timelines of the world. And then let's see what this is. So this is 40 episodes, Liberty Kids, the complete series on DVD. Um, so again, I thought it might be nice to have some media formats for history that are not just me reading the book to my child. So um, this one came recommended um, as a, a good series for videos for um, early American US history. Um, I think we'll also be able to watch those, but then also kind of talk about how the version of this story, um, ooh, quite the shine, the version of this story may differ from what we're reading in some of our books from other perspectives. So now I have empty boxes, which the cats will enjoy. And that is what we have so far. Um, I do already have um, some of the books for history that came um, a few weeks back and a couple from uh, that I just got last week. So um, I think we're probably close to having all of our books at this point, which means I need a new bookshelf. So anyway, let me know what kinds of curriculum you guys are using, uh, where you get your books from, how you select what books, and hope everything is off to a great start for this year. Thanks.